Hallelujah. The patterns of God are so powerful that for as long as you walk in keeping with those patterns, it is impossible to go down. His integrity, listen carefully, his integrity is back of his word. His integrity is back of his patterns. This is what gives us the confidence to know that if he did it yesterday, he will do it again today. And we can predict tomorrow with accuracy that may sound like pride because of the consistency of his character. That by these two immutable things, the Bible declares that it is impossible for God to lie. This is our confidence. This is our consolation. Hallelujah. So you have come tonight. I beseech you that your heart be open. You have not come to meet a politician. You have not come to meet an earthly monarch. You have not come to meet some ambassador. You have come to Jesus the head of the church the one today exalted both lord and christ hallelujah the multi-breasted one and the bible says they looked unto him and their faces were lightened may the lord do us good tonight in jesus mighty name we pray let me one more time salute all those who are worshiping with us for the first time Thank you very much. Remains an honor to have you worship with us. And for our family connecting online, our Zaria family and our global family, blessings and grace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Koinonia is a place that God has covenanted even with himself that this is a house of encounters. This is a place of transformation. A place of revival indeed and this is a place where the multifaceted possibilities of the spirit are allowed to find expression unrestrained and tonight will not be any different in the name of Jesus hallelujah as always we're committed to bringing you the Word of God you know I was thinking whilst preparing to come to church that the teaching of the Word of God, please listen, the teaching of the Word of God in partnership with the ministry of the Holy Spirit is the only platform for the enlightenment of the saints. The saints are not enlightened just by passion. The saints are not even enlightened just by desire. It will take more than desire and it will take more than passion for the saints to be enlightened. It will take the ministry of the teaching priest in partnership with the Holy Spirit to bring genuine enlightenment that leads to transformation. How do you know that what you are receiving is light indeed? Two things. Number one, John 1, 5. The light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. So if it is light indeed, it must sustain the power to veto the presence and the influence of darkness. The Bible says that was the true light. That means there are false lights. Information that carry a semblance of liberty, but they do not sustain within them the power to set free indeed. That was the true light that lighted every man. When it has to do with the ministry of light, every man is qualified to have access to light. There are realities in the spirit where the Bible will say he gave unto some. But when it has to do with the ministry of light, it says that was the true light which lighted every man, regardless race, regardless background. That was the light, the true light which lighted every man. Hallelujah. The sun, as we know, is older than every man on earth yet its illumination and its strength its ability to shine has never diminished are we together now that is the excellency of light that light does not sustain within it the weakness of fading light is consistent in its illumination every time light seems to fade 
the problem is not the light the problem is the object reflecting it so there are times on earth where the night time looks very dark it is simply the problem of the alignment of the moon not the illumination of the sun as for the sun it remains ever bright and the bible says the path of the just is as a shining light is that in your bible that shineth more and more more and more is the destiny of every believer in christ even unto the perfect day may you find light tonight in the name of jesus christ it takes light to rule neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel once that lamp is lit it is impossible to hide it hallelujah and so it's important for you to be very intentional about your receiving the word of god don't be careless about it at all jesus gave a parable and it was the parable of the sower and he said that a sower came and sowed good seed but on four different kinds of soils are we together and they produce several kinds of harvest for even the soils that were good some 30 fold some 60 fold and some a hundred fold that means it is the responsibility of every believer to open up your heart because the bible tells us how to be a good soil it says the one that fell on good soil are they that heard the word and understood it so your hearing and your understanding is what makes you a good soil praise the name of the lord tonight i want to teach on a topic that i believe is going to speak to so many of us i believe that this topic will give us wisdom will give us intelligence will mature our understanding as to the ways of god and will help us to be able to command greater levels of victory because this is the assignment of the teaching priest according to jeremiah 3 and verse 15 it says and i will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart it says they will feed you with knowledge and they will feed you with understanding it says and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation hallelujah so when the word of god is taught it helps you to understand the ways of god and it fades away ignorance from your christian experience in the presence of light you can now walk in dominion hallelujah dominion is not a possibility outside of light it takes light to dominate psalm i mean isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 it says arise shine not because you are tired of sitting down it says for your light is come amplified will say arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new life hallelujah praise the name of the lord i'm teaching tonight on a topic that i title the afflictions of the righteous and I want you to please pay attention. You would be learning a lot tonight. The afflictions of the righteous. Psalm 34 and verse 19. Help us, Spirit of the living God. We depend on your wisdom. The Bible says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Then it says, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Two very powerful information. Number one, many are the afflictions of the righteous. And then number two, it says, the Lord delivered him out of them all. Say amen. amen. Second scripture, please. Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Romans 8, 28. The Bible says, and we know. This is an information that is privy only to believers. It is not general knowledge. It says, and we know, we who are of the fold, we who are people who have submitted to the word. It said there is an information we know that gives us the staying power through negative seasons. It says, and we know that all things work together for good, not to everybody, to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose can we look at one more scripture second corinthians chapter 4 please 17 and 18 
second corinthians chapter 4 17 and 18 here's what paul says for our light affliction which is but for a moment he says walketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory 18 says while we look not at the things which are seen but the things which are not seen he says for the things which are seen are temporal subject to change but the things which are not seen are eternal may the lord bless the reading of his word hallelujah now to start tonight the bible teaches us that we have been called as believers into a life of victory that for the believer there is a very definite implication when you give your life to jesus christ as we know you receive of his life and you surrender your life to him the bible tells us number one that there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son number two the bible tells us that you become the righteousness of god in christ because now you have access through christ to that gift of righteousness are we together then the bible tells us according to john chapter 10 and verse 10 that for believing in jesus you have access to that life I am come that ye may have life and that you may have that life more abundantly. Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus in John chapter 3 and when we get to verse 16, he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Greek word zoe. 17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, it says, but that the world through him might be saved. So there are many implications um, to being a believer. When you become a believer, you are not an ordinary person. Among other things, the Bible tells us that you are the righteous. Are we together? You are a bona fide recipient of the life of God. You now sustain the potential to walk in victory. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 57, the Bible says, Now thanks be to God, 1 Corinthians 15 and 57, 5, 7. Thanks be to God which giveth us the victory and that that victory comes through our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's important for us to know that the Bible teaches in a very clear and unmistaken way that believers are called to a life of victory. You must have that at the back of your mind. Number two is that the basis for the believer's victory in the kingdom is the finished work of Christ. You must be able to defend your confidence as to the fact that you should live a victorious life because situations and circumstances will challenge that victory. The basis for the believer's victory in the kingdom is the finished work of Christ. That means the summation of everything Jesus did from his death, his burial, and his resurrection. This is the basis. Listen, as simple as this point is, if you do not know what is the basis for your victory, you will just become a religious person who is speaking what seems to be right, but it does not sustain any power in the spirit because the anointing is released on the strength of understanding, understanding, understanding. It is not what you say or do that releases power. It is the understanding that supports what you say or what you do. So this is a kingdom that is predicated upon understanding. The spirituality and the correctness of your activity notwithstanding. That means you can act correctly. You can even speak correctly. But from a standpoint of ignorance, it will not produce any results. Are we together? The sons of Sceva were saying the correct thing. We adjure you by Jesus. The statement was correct. But the requisite understanding that will release the power to back what they were saying was not there. So it is not just what we do in terms of its correctness it is the spiritual understanding that supports our speakings and our doings that releases the power of god ephesians 4 18 says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts in fact the assignment of the prince of this world as paul taught us is to blind the minds of the people 
Are we together now? So the Bible teaches that we have been called onto a life of victory in Christ. And the Bible teaches us that the singular basis for the believer's victory is on the strength of that which Christ has done. Of course, in partnership with our understanding and our acting upon that truth, even in faith. Are we following so far? The third point I want us to know as a foundation tonight is that the Bible is also very clear as to the fact that there will be moments of affliction. Listen now. Haven't established the fact that the word of God is clear as to the believer's heritage and destiny of perpetual victory. And the Bible tells us that the basis for our victory is Christ and that which he has done. Are we together? But the Bible also is not silent as to the fact that believers will face moments of afflictions, losses, pain, and challenges. You would think the Bible should be silent about these issues, but the Bible is very clear as to the fact that there will be moments of afflictions, there will be moments of losses, there will be moments of pain and challenges in the life of the believer. Psalm 20, please, from verse 1 to 5. The psalmist wrote it so beautifully. He said, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. So the psalmist identifies such a moment in the life of the believer called the day of trouble. This was not negative confession. He's saying in my study, even as a king, I have come to a point where there are time periods in the lives of men, even those who are of the fold, even the covenant people, that there is such a day called the day of trouble. It says, the name of the God of Jacob defend thee, verse 2, send thee help in that day of trouble from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion, verse 3. It says, remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt offerings. We're reading to 5, verse 4. Grant thee according to thine own heart to fulfill all thy counsel. The last verse. It says, we will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God will we set up our banners. It says, the Lord will fulfill all our petitions. So the psalmist is saying that there is a day called the day of trouble. Hallelujah. Several examples we can find in scripture of men and women who were purported to be righteous and yet had moments and seasons of very, very disheartening conditions. An example was, as we find in scripture, an example is Abraham and Sarah. In Genesis chapter 15 from verse 1 to 3, the Bible tells us that after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, Fear not, Abraham. He says, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Can you imagine this kind of salutation? And yet Abraham was in the midst of something that was a serious problem. Verse 2, it says, And Abraham said, Lord God, what will thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is the Eliezer of Damascus, verse 3. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is my heir. Do you know what he was saying? Thank God for all these wonderful salutations, but I'm in the middle of a situation. This is what matters to me right now. I go childless. In fact, when you read chapter 16 and verse 1, give us 16 verse 1. The Bible tells us now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bear him no children. Can you imagine that this, this is Abraham that the Bible would call the friend of God. This is Sarai, his wife. And yet, even as people who were so close to God, they had such an issue in their life, trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And the Bible is not silent about that story. You would think the Bible would just wrap it up and say Abraham was a great man, came from Ur of the Chaldeans, was a noble man, received a promise from God, finally offered Isaac and became a great man. That's an intelligent way to summarize the Bible. But the Bible goes to be that detail to tell us the concerns of that man Abraham. Are we together? Example number two. Israel in the land of Egypt the Bible records that Israel 
God's own chosen people, his covenant people were in captivity. You find that in Exodus chapter 1. Um, the full text is 1 to 14, but let's jump to verse 8 for the sake of time. Hallelujah. Is someone learning already? That the nation of Israel, God's covenant people were in captivity. And did you know for all that 430 years, God still called them my people and they still identified him as their God. And yet they were in captivity. Now there arose a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Verse 9. It says, and he said unto his people, behold, I hope you know that the captivity of the nation of Israel started as a plan to manage fear and jealousy. That was what led, graduated to become 430 years of captivity. Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there fallen out any war, they join also our enemies and fight us. That was the whole basis for subjugating them. There was a time they were equal in terms of ranking and privileges. But another king came up and said, no, we can't let this happen. One day they will become allies with our enemies and they will defeat us. And so they suggested captivity and bondage as a strategy to keep them limited. Are we together now? And verse 11 now for time. The Bible says, therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramesses. These were gods in Egypt. And you read down to 14, it just tells you the captivity that God's own people went through. How will you imagine that God, who is the mighty God, is watching from heaven and not for two years, not for 10 years. This is the longest time officially recorded that God's people went into captivity consciously under their taskmasters. Hallelujah. Example number three is the mysterious story of Job. We find that in chapter one down to chapter two. Just write it for reference. Up till this day, it has remained a theological debate as to the, the real spiritual lesson behind the story of Job because it takes extreme level of spiritual intelligence, discernment, work with God to be able to decipher the book of Job is, is laced with all kinds of confusion. It starts by telling us of a noble man, the greatest and the wisest as his time in the East. And the Bible records that he was a man that feared the Lord and eschewed evil. Qualified to be called a righteous man by the standard, whatever standard was there. Now the Bible tells us that there was a summon in the heavenlies. This is where the story gets very interesting and that satan was also there the bible never called him lucifer at this time it identifies him already as satan this is a very disturbing scripture because when you read from the banishing of satan from heaven the bible says a place was no longer found for him in heaven and yet the bible says satan came among them so this can be an endless debate among theologians. That's not our goal tonight. I'm just showing you that there is such a disturbing reality and you find it in the Bible. Are we together now? And then a discussion happens in heaven and based on the text, Satan is given permission to touch everything around Job except his life. Then the Bible says that there was a day on earth can you see that the manifestation of affliction and all kinds of evil also work with times? There was a day on earth for the execution of that which was finished in the spirit. And the Bible says, one report after report, the sons, his cattle, all kinds of things happened to that man. But I love something that the Bible says happened to Job. It says that with all of these things that Job bowed his head and worshipped. What an, what an interesting, what an interesting expression. Do you know what it means that in one day you lose your daughters, you lose your sons, you lose your business, you lose everything. And the Bible says he shaved himself, he fell down and worshipped. 
Example number four, are we learning? The Bible talks about a wonderful woman in scripture called Ruth. You find that in Ruth chapter one, and we'll read from verse one to five. Now, there are two women who had the privilege of their names as books of the Bible. One is Esther, the other is Ruth. Hallelujah. The Bible says it came to pass in the days when judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife had two sons. He's talking about Naomi now. The Bible says his name was Elimelech and then the wife was Naomi. And then they had two sons, Malon and Chilion. And they got married to Ruth and to Oprah. Are we together? Just rushing for sake of time. Let's go to verse 4 for the sake of time. We're reading to 5. The Bible says they took them wives of the women of Moab and one was called Oprah and the other was called Ruth. And they dwelt there about 10 years. Watch affliction. Watch tragedy. The Bible says the two sons also died. I don't know what kind of spirit was working there, but the husband of Naomi died. And then the sons that got married to them also died. The Bible says, and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Separated from them. And you know the story? That looked like the end of Ruth's life. In fact, the woman told them when you read the full text, he said, look, go and find husbands for yourself. Just leave me. I'm a woman with many sorrows. And then Oprah went and Ruth refused. And that led to a series of events that will finally connect her to Boaz. And now you know from history that she was part of the genealogy of Jesus. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Are we learning? It says, but the Lord delivered him from them all still giving examples example number five jesus himself you would think because he's the son of the living god the creator of the ends of the earth he would be exempted from affliction when you read from luke chapter 22 all through for sake of time you just write it the bible tells us that jesus himself got to a point where he had to stand before Pontius Pilate. In fact, right from Gethsemane, he looked at the people when they came with swords and all of that. He said, why are you using knives to come and catch me? I was all around with you in the temple. What offense have I committed? But this is your hour and the power of darkness, he said. Am I right on that? And Jesus was caught, malhandled in, you know, with the council, Pontius Pilate, and you know the story, went through all kinds of things until he died even the death on the cross. The cross is a very interesting place, I have taught you. The cross is the place where both good and bad people meet. There were three crosses there at Golgotha, and there were three men there. One among them was Jesus and the other were thieves so be careful who you talk about on the cross you might be talking about jesus the cross is a mysterious place like the prison where both good and bad people are hallelujah jesus number six giving you examples from scripture the Bible talks about Peter, the early apostles. Now, Peter in Acts chapter 12 from verse 1 to 4, know the story. That's the story of Peter. The Bible says, Herod stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Reading to verse 4, it says, verse 2, and he killed James. Can you imagine? James, the brother of John with the sword. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. And verse 4, the Bible says that he apprehended Peter and he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending that after Easter he would bring him forth to the people. You would think a great apostle who just preached, Peter preached the official sermon to launch the manifestation of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. How would a man filled with the Holy Spirit, mentored directly by Jesus, received they were the first fruits of the ministry that ushered in the dispensation of the spirit and yet this man was now bound as a criminal kept in prison hallelujah do i talk about paul and silas in acts chapter 16 that this man the bible says that they went to preach 
and they found a certain damsel who was possessed by the spirit of divination and by the authority of the spirit they casted that demon out and then the bible tells us that as a result they will lay them they flog them and put them in prison you can imagine paul and silas in prison bound hand and feet many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivered them from them all now please listen carefully i wrote something down here i said believers must be trained to know and respond to these periods of affliction and challenges believers must be trained because you see we live in a world where because of the loud proposition of our victory in Christ, most believers are at a loss when they begin to face moments where they cannot understand what is happening around their lives, their families, and many believers have turned away from the things of God because of the negative situations and circumstances around them, their lives. Because they've tried to find meaning and perspective as to why some of these things, I understand the affliction of the sinner, the Bible says, mark the wicked, their end is destruction. So I don't need to ask why the wicked is being punished. I don't need to ask why the wicked is being destroyed. But the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. The destruction of the sinner is imminent. Based on God's justice system and based on the laws of the spirit. Because the Bible says that... Um, how does he put it now? He says, good understanding procured favor. That is um, Proverbs 13, 15. He says, but the way of the transgressor is hard. The transgressor is the violator of God's principles. So when people violate principles and become wicked, their end is already predicted from scripture. Now, but how do you reconcile the righteous seeming to go through the same experience as the wicked? In the face of challenges, what then is the excellency of righteousness? What then is the excellency of godliness? By reason of what I do, almost on a daily basis without exaggeration, I receive calls and text messages from people, many of them believers, seeking explanation, communicating their various annoyance and lamentations as to many things that may have befallen them from bereavements, there are people who have lost loved ones and some of the loved ones at the point of death, they were saying by his stripes, I am healed. And yet they still died. How do you explain that to an unbeliever? How do you explain people who got into all kinds of trouble because they refused to give bribe or collect bribe? They stood for their integrity and made up their minds that they would not compromise. And you would think their refusal you know, they are, they, are, they are rejecting compromise should immediately bring them to elevated positions of honor. Many of them went through declines, sadly, even unto death. How about Matthiadom? Those who stood for Jesus, even at the point of death. Hallelujah. How about believers who have trusted releasing their hearts, releasing their all? How about believers who emptied their accounts, serving the purposes of the kingdom? And there seemed to have been a boomerang effect that has affected them when the pandemic struck. It, it hit believers, it hit unbelievers alike. And let me tell you the truth. If explanation and perspective is not given to this, we are going to lose many believers in the days that come. Because many people will be confused. I understand the affliction of the wicked. But it is difficult to understand the affliction of the righteous. Hallelujah. As a man of God, I have seen miracles, all kinds of manifestations of God's power. And I'm indebted to God eternally for trusting us with this grace and apostleship to do the things we have done. But I have had to stand and weep with people at their funerals. I've had to comfort families. I've also had to, you know, just keep quiet and give God the glory. Because in, in spite of the spiritual intelligence and the grace given, 
we have been confronted even as men of God with situations where it is wisest to just be silent because any other thing you say will be a communication of foolishness in light of that kind of catastrophe there are times that believers are so plagued with certain situations that the best way the best way is just to say Lord we thank you we may not understand but we thank you hallelujah I have studied this myself and by the Spirit of God I have come up with five keys and this is really the core of my teaching tonight I want you to please pay attention I guarantee you that you will need this teaching in your life and with it you'll be able to help others and if you're a man of God here please lend me your attention because you will be confronted with situations that will require this level of spiritual understanding there are five keys that are found from Scripture that is able to help the righteous to not only manage afflictions but to turn that affliction to victory even in the spirit you see we agree from scripture that challenges are not unusual in fact here's what jesus said in this world you will have tribulation jesus is speaking he says but be of good cheer for i have overcome the world this is not a prophet this is not some apostle this is jesus the christ himself saying in this world there is a guarantee that you will have this and that tribulation he says but be of good cheer i have overcome the world hallelujah there are five biblical keys that the Bible gives the believer as the keys that will help them to experience victory in spite of or in the midst of challenges. Are you ready for the five keys? Pray in the spirit for one minute and ask the Lord to open your understanding. Give us understanding even by your word. Many are the afflictions of the righteous the righteous businessman the righteous apostle the righteous prophet the righteous mother the righteous student the righteous politician even the righteous nation hallelujah key number one key number one are you ready the first key that the bible gives now you must understand that the word of God is not a recommendation that the word of God is not an opinion it may look like a recommendation it may look like an opinion but for the believer who wants to walk perpetually in victory the word of God is life the word of God is instruction it says my son pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings it says do not let them depart from your heart keep them in the midst of your, your your mouth keep them in the midst of your heart he said they are life not to everybody to those that find them and health even to their flesh so you must take the Word of God as final authority as touching anything the Word of God presents the mind of God concerning any and all matters are we together number one the first key any believer any righteous person who is going through a season of affliction doesn't matter what it is called the first recommendation from scripture is to look unto jesus please write as simple as that sounds do not assume you understand what i'm saying just write and listen to look on to jesus to look on to jesus now we can read psalm 34 beginning from verse 1 look on to jesus it says i will bless the lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth verse 2 my soul shall make her boast in the lord the humble shall hear of and hear thereof and be glad verse 3 it says oh magnify the lord with me and let us exalt his name together for i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears five it says they looked unto him is that in your bible and they were lightened and their faces were not ashamed verse 6 it says the poor man cried and the lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles reading to 10 the angel of the lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them verse 8 it says oh taste and see that the lord is good blessed is the man that trusted in him 
Verse 9, Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Final verse, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. It says, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Say it loud, amen. amen. Hallelujah. So the Bible says to look unto Jesus. You find that in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, he says, the author and the finisher of our faith. Please look up. I can tell you it is very difficult to look unto Jesus in the face of challenges, tribulations. What does it mean to look? Now pay attention. To look means to direct one's gaze and focus towards someone or something that's what it means to look to look means to direct one's gaze to direct one's focus away from other things towards someone or towards something but then to look also means to rely on or to depend totally upon when the bible says look unto jesus Number one, it means to set your gaze upon him, not wavering whatsoever. But number two, it means to depend and rely totally upon him. Even when you do not understand him, look unto Jesus. The biblical recommendation for managing seasons and moments of affliction. Look unto Jesus. The Bible says... There is a very strange and interesting story. You find that in Numbers chapter 21 from verse 4 down to 9. The Bible talks about the nation of Israel that when they came by the way of the Red Sea, the Bible says to compass the land of Edom. The soul of the people was discouraged because they kept walking endlessly and it looked like there was no victory, no rest for them. They were hungry, they were angry, and the trouble started from verse 5. Reading to verse 9. The people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, there is no water, and our soul loathed this light bread. Verse 6, the Bible says the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they beat the people and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. He says, pray unto the Lord that he takes away the serpent from us. And Moses prayed for the people. How did God answer the prayer? The Lord instructed Moses and said, make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole and it shall come to pass that everyone that is beaten when he looketh upon it shall live. What kind of an instruction is that? What is the relationship between a serpent, a brazen serpent, and healing, and life, and victory? It was not about the serpent. He was teaching them that there is life and dominion in trusting God's plan, in trusting God's way. As foolish as it is, once it is God that has spoken, he's saying even in the midst of the fiery serpents, the wisest thing to do in front of a snake is to run away, not to look. Hallelujah. It is stupid for someone to sit down and watch a serpent curl around you. Are we together now? And is about to kill you. The wisest human instruction is to run away. Not to look at some serpent somewhere. And yet, that is the foolishness of God's path. He was teaching them that the ways of God may not make sense, but in them there is life. Look and leave, my brother, leave. Look to Jesus Christ and leave. It is recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and believe. Apostle, you have no idea what is happening in my life right now. It's on account of my faith in Jesus that I'm in this trouble right now. Look to Jesus. Hallelujah. To depend upon him. Psalm 1, 2, 3 from verse 1 and 2. 1, 23, 1 and 2. The Bible says, unto thee lift I up mine eyes. 
O thou that dwellest in the heavens, verse 2, it says, Behold, as the eyes of the servant look upon the hand of their masters, it says, And as the eyes of the maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon thee, O Lord, until that he have mercy upon us. Can I tell you? There's no time, but probably let me just give you three scriptures that helps us to know why should you look unto Jesus. Number one is found in Psalm 127. I hope I've not lost you. We're still looking at the first reason or the first recommendation from scripture to look to Jesus. Psalm 127 from verse 1 and 2 says, Except the Lord builds a house, I am showing you why you need to look unto Jesus, that they labor in vain that build it, and except the Lord keepeth the city, the watchmen walketh but in vain. Verse 2 says, it is vain for you to rise up early and to sit up late to eat the bread of sorrow, for he giveth his beloved sleep. Why do we need to look unto Jesus? Romans chapter 9 and verse 16. It says, It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but it is of the Lord that showeth mercy. That means no matter what else you do, you can stretch your human imagination from border to border. If God does not show you mercy, everything you are doing will end up being moving around in circles. Hallelujah. Why do we need to look unto Jesus? Psalm 62 and verse 11. I have spoken once and twice have ye heard that power belongeth to God. When you look unto Jesus, you are looking unto the only person, the only God who has the power to do something about your situation. My Bible tells me some trust in horses and some trust in chariots. It says, but we will trust in the name of our God. This is true. Men can want to help. They may be sincere on that, but do they have the power? Hallelujah. Someone say, look unto Jesus. Let me give you one more scripture. Why do you need to look unto Jesus? At times of adversary. At times of pain Psalm 133 from verse 1 behold how good and how pleasant it is Psalm 113 my apologies 113 113 113 praise ye the Lord praise ye he served the servants of the Lord praise the name of the Lord verse 2 it says blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth forever verse 3 it says from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same the name of the lord is to be praised uh -huh. we're reading to verse 9 the lord is high above all the nations and his glory above the heavens watch this now it says who is like unto the lord our god who dwelleth on high verse 6 who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and are in earth seven who raised the poor i'm showing you why you need to look unto jesus God is the only one who can raise men, the poor, out of the dust and lifted the needy out of the dunghill. That he may set him to sit with princes, even the princes of his people. Verse 9. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. This is what he can do. When you look unto Jesus, it may sound like foolishness in the midst of challenges because there are many times I have taught you here when God is silent the most difficult face in the believers life is when God is silent even though he is the word there are times God is mysteriously silent and I've taught you that the silence of God is also a language you must know what God is saying when he's not speaking because when God is not speaking he's saying something look unto Jesus now let me give you a word of caution we're looking at five keys and the Spirit of God had to put it in my heart to write this down according to Matthew 11 and verse 6 it says blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me can I tell you if you've not had the temptation to be offended in God, it's either you are really a baby 
or you've not lived long enough on this earth because there are moments in your life when you feel it's, it's almost as if you feel cheated for loving Jesus are we together John came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Watch this. John was the prophet who ordained Jesus to ministry. It was revealed to John. John had the secret code that would identify Jesus. When he saw Jesus by prophecy, he said, Behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Now John is locked up, caught sea. Herodias, the daughter, as a birthday gift, he was locked up and was about to be beheaded in anger. When the disciples came to him, you know what he said? The same person who identified Jesus, who announced him, he said, go and ask him, are you the Messiah or should we expect another? That is what offense can do. The man who ordained Jesus in ministry. In fact, he trained some of the disciples who would later be the disciples of Jesus. And yet he said, Jesus, for I, I've, my pain vetoes every vision I have about you. My pain vetoes anything God told me about you. I am in a moment of pain. You claim to be the Messiah and now I am locked up in prison and you do not even have the courtesy to come and visit me. I hear a rumor that as a birthday gift, my head is going and you do not even show any sign of concern. Take that message to your Jesus. The disciples come to Jesus in a crusade ground. And says, sir, we don't mean to embarrass you, but there's a serious situation. The man who announced you most, the man who cried out and said he was the voice who was sent to bear witness to you, is in total doubt of you right now. What can destroy a man's ministry more than somebody who loved you and endorsed you openly? And is now saying, go, I'm not even sure of what I laid hands on. And the Bible says, Jesus with calmness and intelligence he turned and began to lay hands healed a few people he said go and tell john what you see the blind see the deaf hear and so on and so forth the gospel is preached then he says 11 verse 6 now blessed is he whatso whosoever shall not be offended in me lord where were you when i was losing my job where were the angels of protection when my loved one was being attacked by terrorists or died in a car crash? I don't mean to get you emotional, but I'm just, I'm discussing on the afflictions of the righteous. Lord, where were you when for the sake of my integrity as a man of God, I seem to have gone down? Where were you when Potiphar's wife was all around Joseph and because of his integrity, he didn't go to the palace he went to the prison the afflictions of the righteous how do you explain joseph holding a woman's uh, the wife's um what they call it now her veil or whatever it is he was holding how could he say that he did not have anything to do with her that was evidence enough and yet god was watching in heaven how do you explain hannah crying year after year going to Shiloh. How do you explain that? How do you explain God's people under the rule and bondage of the Egyptians? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Let me tell you this. The believer is not a believer because of results. The believer is a believer because you have committed yourself to trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. Look unto Jesus is the first biblical recommendation i've had very painful experiences in the lives of people as i as i serve the purposes of god and sometimes you know when they can't see jesus you who is the closest to him based on what they perceive whatever they would have told him is what they tell you hallelujah since i cannot see jesus you claim to be the one who has come in his name you better be prepared to help me convey to jesus and I will tell you loud and clear, where was he when this happened? I know many people who I called in maybe the face of bereavement and whatever. And I say, can we say a word of prayer? And they say, Apostle, with all due respect, please do not talk to me about anything prayer now. And I know that they don't mean it. It's just what pain can do. 
Hallelujah. I heard about the story of someone who had an accident and he had to rush out and he stood watching his car burn and it burned to ashes. There was absolutely nothing he would have done. And that was a car that was like two months old. What was the value of dedicating the car in church? They poured oil on that car and it still burnt after two months. How about the business of believers that went down from COVID? And some of those people were great sponsors of the gospel. Now, just follow me. I'm a good pilot who will land well. You just follow me. Hallelujah. Hmm. How about a man of God who gathered sick people and shouted in the name of the Lord that they will be healed and laid hands on them one by one till they arrested him and threw him out of that place. And he left that crusade ground as if he was living a funeral. Where is the Jesus I kept shouting and talking about? Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not just playing with words, nor am I playing with your mind. I'm revealing something that may be someone's situation right now. And you know, in the midst of challenges, you forget every title you have. You forget every, even Jesus wept. Very disturbing scripture. John 11, 35. If you see Jesus weeping, will you not cry too? That means you are in trouble. John 11, 35. The comforter of those who were always weeping is now weeping. It doesn't matter why he's weeping. The fact that you saw tears coming out of his eyes. Hallelujah. Life wept. Hope wept. Victory wept. The fountain of wisdom wept. Weeping always carries a, a picture of limitation. When people weep, it seems to communicate hopelessness or despair. And the Bible says Jesus wept. As God, he never cried. But when he became a man, he cried. Jesus was angry. The Bible does not hide his frustrations. He went into the temple and flogged people in anger. He caused a fig tree because he was hungry and came to the tree and the tree would not deliver. And he caused that tree. Look to Jesus. Listen to me. There will be moments in your life where you truly will not be able to find answers intellectually. That's why there is a realm of peace that surpasses all understanding. That means that peace is beyond the realm of arguing what is this, what is that. Remember at the apex of, of, of Job's problem, the wife was even confused. She said, curse God and die. And Job said, no, why do you speak like one of these foolish women? He said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait. I don't know what is happening to me. Different people came and started communicating several opinions and Ellie who one time shot them and he said you guys I respect you I wanted to speak but I have a limitation in age He said but there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty make it men of understanding Job himself who encouraged himself in the Lord got to a point where he was angry and when you read chapter 38 the Bible said he summoned God he said God I finished comforting myself we need to talk please come and explain to me the reason behind this pain and the Bible says God came in a whirlwind and a discussion began hallelujah look unto Jesus number two depend on him Number two now, let me give you number two. Commit to prayer, even in the midst of pain, even in the midst of hopelessness, even in the midst of despair. Commit to prayer. That is the second point. James chapter 5 and verse 13. James 5, 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray, the Bible says. Let him pray. When you see afflictions, you see despair, you see all kinds of things. He says to pray. It is difficult to pray when you are in pain. That is where spirituality is tested. Lord, I do not know what is happening, but I pray. I pray. Hallelujah. 
First Thessalonians 5.17. It says, pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians 5.17. Pray without ceasing. Someone say prayer. Shout it again. Say prayer. Prayer is very, very powerful. When you do not know what to do, pray. It is in the place of prayer that direction comes. When you do not know what to do, pray. Pray even in the spirit. Pray in your understanding. I don't know where the solution to these bills will come from. There is already a death sentence around my life and my children health-wise. You do not know what to do, pray. The Bible says the biblical recommendation for managing affliction is to pray. Man of God, pray. Businessman, pray. It does not take a certificate to pray. It takes hunger and passion and the recognition that there is a God that rules over the affairs of men. Say pray. pray. Commit to prayer. That is the second biblical key. Every time you do not know what is happening in your life, that is not the time to start running from pillar to post, discussing things with people who don't have the power to solve your problem. Can I tell you the truth? Running around will only deplete the energy that is left. Use that same energy, lock the door, and begin to pray. And sometimes, you honestly may not know how to pray. You may allow your tears do the prayer. And while you sing, or you may allow prayer to just come from any material while you soak in the glory there pray 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 I thought I would get the job now this is the 10th year 15th year 5th year without a job pray someone in the hospital has already said forget about me just focus on the children as for me I am going pray Listen to what I'm telling you and please take it seriously. Pray. Man of God, since pandemic, it looks like your ministry just went down. The key is to pray. Discussion may be consoling, but you have to pray. You can pray yourself to comfort. You can pray yourself to faith. Prayer is like exercise. Nobody likes it, but you have to start. Once you start, something happens to you. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and reeds What a privilege to carry everything to God. Most people will do any other thing but pray they will cry which is human and which is okay but they will not pray prayer has nothing to do with um, whether you have the appetite and the desire it is a requirement you must pray number three let's hurry up is God speaking to someone number one look to jesus meaning depend on him even when you do not understand him the word trust is the word bata trust in the lord that means to throw yourself at him expecting him to hold you and like the hebrew boys that even if you do not deliver us oh king we have made a determination that as far as jesus as far as god is concerned we will not bow that's why you see conditional christianity is dangerous the kind of christianity that says god i will only serve you based on the fact that you bless me no god is a covenant keeping god but our love for jesus and our love for the things of the spirit must be beyond the results that come that even if I'm in the midst of fire and rescue does not come, let it be that I die trusting him. Are we together? Number three, what is the third approach to dealing with afflictions as a believer? Are you ready? Meditate upon and speak the word over that situation. Meditate upon and speak the word over that situation. Meditate upon and speak the word over that situation. Joel chapter 3 and verse 10. Joel chapter 3 and verse 10. Joel, Joel, J-O-E-L, chapter 3 and verse 10. 
It says, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. It says, let the weak say. Hold on. Where do you have the strength to say when you are weak? There is always strength to say, even when there is no strength to do. You may not have the strength to do, but God will always ensure that the strength to say remains with you. That when you lose every kind of strength, there is within your spirit man the strength to say. The strength to say gives you the strength to do. Let the weak say. Let those who are crying say. Let those who are discouraged say. That means in the mind of God, there is no situation that happens to the believer that should make him lose the ability to say. There is always strength enough to say. Let the weak say, I am strong. He never said, let the weak say strength. I am strong to personalize it and to believe it. Let the weak say, I am strong. Isaiah 3 and verse 10. Isaiah 3 and verse 10. Say unto the righteous, the same righteous with many afflictions. He said, say to that righteous that it shall be well with him. Someone say it must be well with me. In fact, say it is well with me. Prophesy to yourself, say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that it is well with me. Don't mind what the devil is saying. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that it is well with me. Say unto the righteous that it shall be well with them. Yes, I know I will come out of this. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the person in debt say, I will come out of it in the name of Jesus. Because thanks be to God that causes us to triumph. Say unto the one who has lost the breadwinner in their family. Father is gone, mother is gone, and you are alone. I may not see wind, I may not see rain. But one thing I know is that my valley shall be filled with water. Because there is Abba, the one who never dies. And the Bible says that if he can clothe the lilies of the valley and feed the birds that do not sow or do not reap, they are violating a fundamental spiritual law. Yet in needs they never lack. Hallelujah. Meditate on and speak the word. Can I tell you, when you learn to speak the word, it's not a Pentecostal suggestion. Speaking the word is part of the frame. Do you know, God is very powerful and he has taught us. The Bible says he created us in his image and in his likeness. His likeness means to function like him. And all through scripture, we see God create by speaking. He blesses by speaking. He restores by speaking. He lifts by speaking. Every time God opens his mouth, something leaves his mouth that ministers life to creation. The Bible says even for man that he breathed upon that man. To breathe upon the man does not mean he used his nose. He opened his mouth and life came and entered into that man. Are we together? Speak the word. Psalm 107 from verse 2 and 3. Psalm 107 from verse 2 and 3. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Let the healed of the Lord say so. Let the lifted of the Lord say so. It's not enough to know so, you must say so. Whom he had redeemed from the hand of the enemy, verse 3. It says, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and the north and the south. Say so. Say so. In the name of Jesus, I'm coming out of this situation. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? I may not understand what is happening to me, but in the name of Jesus, the Bible says all things work together for my good. I expect glory at the end of this confusion. I may not know what the process is all about, but I know the end. That the end is glory and is glorious. And upon that, I place my faith. Learn to say so. Learn to say so. You don't say what is happening. You say what the word of God says. Hallelujah. Meditate upon and speak the word over that situation. Is someone learning? 
that means as you return back now you can carry whatever is the is the basis for the challenge the affliction whatever it is you continue to make declarations even if it looks like it's a hopeless situation like death because the most um the the, the most hopeless thing that can happen to a man as far as this side of god's kingdom is concerned is that the person passes on to glory so physically you may not see the person again even at that you may not have the person back again but you can decree and declare in the name of jesus i know that the comfort of the spirit is at work in this family it may be a difficult thing but by the power of the holy spirit with each passing day strength is released upon us and whatever role that person played in the name of jesus god will come through god will raise men in multiplied ways to play that role see there is a way the believer was designed to function when you allow emotions to drive the vehicle of your christian life you will end up being a disaster sincerely so you will need to push emotions aside and peg yourself at the word of god no matter what you feel that which god said you must say are we together the word confession comes from the word homologio. It means repeat as you have heard. And the purpose of repeating it is for creation, not just for emphasis. I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. Is someone learning already? I'm giving you biblical keys. Number one, I said, look unto Jesus, depend totally upon him. Number two, commit to prayer. Number three, meditate upon and speak the word of God over that situation. Over that situation. Because every situation has an ear. And believe me when I tell you, it can hear the word of the Lord. Are you ready for number, number four? Now listen carefully. Please listen carefully. Number four, seek comfort, prayer, and help from friends and the family of believers i will take it slowly seek comfort the righteous now in the midst of affliction seek comfort comma prayer and help from godly friends and from the family of believers this is you can start this because it is a very major secret to overcoming afflictions seek comfort prayers and help from friends and the family of believers in acts chapter 4 when we read from verse 21 please give us acts chapter 4 and verse 21 remember when peter and john were threatened as a result of the man at gate beautiful who had been healed so when they had further threatened them it says they let them go finding nothing how they might punish them because of the people for all men glorified god for that which was done next verse it says for the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was showed 23 and being let go they went to their own company. Everybody said their own company. So they had a larger community of believers where they could resort to, to find company. The Bible says, and they reported all that the chief priests and the elders had done. And together as a company, verse 24 now, the Bible says, when they heard the company, they lifted their voice. Say they. Not just the one person. He came to a company of believers and they could find comfort. They could pray together. They lifted up their voice unto God with one accord. Listen, many believers do not survive afflictions and tragedies and negative situations because they lack these four points. Many believers do not have a larger company of friends and like-minded believers. Did you know it is a terrible thing for a believer to not be connected to a larger body of believers? Because when, when disaster strikes like this, no matter how powerful you are, you will need the company of believers to shield you and encourage you. There are times the sermon you hear will not come from yourself. It will come from someone else speaking to you. Are we learning? 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 25. It said, brethren, pray for us. There are times that as much as you may want to pray for yourself, you may not have that energy. But there should be some brethren 
that you can honestly say pray for us even though we are apostles do you have the brethren that can pray for you do you have the brethren that can love you that can come and shield you hallelujah philippians 1 19 philippians 1 19 for i know paul is speaking that this shall turn to my salvation how through your prayer paul the prayer warrior is saying i require the prayer and the shield of other believers and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ for this fourth point i wrote something very interesting here and i please want you to listen i said living an isolated christian life will not profit you in the day of adversity living an isolated christian life hallelujah an isolated christian life in ecclesiastes chapter 4 when you read from verse 9 to 12 it talks about the power of unity two are better than one it says because they have a good reward for their labor reading to verse 12 for if they fall one will lift up his fellow but woe to him that is alone when he falleth for he had not another to help him up it says and again if two lie together then they have heat but how can one be warm alone verse 12 now it says and if one prevail against him it says two shall withstand him and a threefold cord is not easily broken living an isolated christian life will not profit you in the day of adversity can i tell you having brethren having godly friends and having a family of believers who love you and know you and support you will require you sowing seeds of love sowing seeds of care and sowing seeds of help to believers too you have to make those investments waiting for these days now let me tell you the truth the proof of your being connected to a spiritual family is not attendance is genuine connection connection that is proven by service and your own impute also attendance does not mean you have a spiritual family have you registered your impact by registering your love by registering your care who knows you are there who has been a beneficiary of your kindness there are many people who attend believer meetings, but nobody knows them enough to come and knock on their door and say, I heard that you have been crying for the past two days. You have blessed me too much. I will not leave this place. Your home is my home. Your tears is my tears. Let me tell you, woe betides a man who has not spent his life investing and sowing seeds of love, seeds of kindness, because you will find, do you know, there are believers who go through pain and they go through it alone because they have not made any commitment to anyone nor any spiritual family enough no track record of service no track record of giving no track record of prayer no track record of support they just freelance participation unfortunately for those people who are betides that believer do you know there are many believers who have cheaply come out of affliction because of the power of a larger body of believers why is your face gloomy like this? I've not been able to pay my rent. I'm not an irresponsible person. It's just that things have been happening in my life. How much is the rent? Ah, I'm even afraid to say it. It's 1.5 million. And you may not even know the person you are talking to. He will say, come and see me tomorrow. You thought he would give you rent. He will give you the key of a house. And say, I have watched you. Every time when it's time to collect offering, I see your service in the house of God. I, you always have that smile, that glow when people are sad. I've taught you that challenges are as large as the ignorance of the victims. You see. Invest in strategic relationships. There are many of you who will not call on anybody. When you hear that people are sick, it's none of your business. When you hear that someone is in trouble, it's none of... Once it does not affect you, it is none of your business. No. No. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Weep with them that weep. And you'll be making investments and you will be surprised. Moments where you need help, the body will come and wrap their hands around you and say, no, let that sword pierce us instead of touching you. You have made too much commitment. There was a woman in the Bible, remember? That some, a woman who died in the Bible, 
and people came and said look at what she this woman cannot die who will continue doing this can i tell you you can prolong your life using your kindness and benevolence your contribution to the program of god can be so significant god will not allow any devil to take your life are we together this will require you sowing seeds of love sowing seeds of care sowing seeds of help to many believers matthew chapter 5 and verse 7 it says blessed are the merciful jesus was teaching he says for they shall obtain mercy galatians chapter 6 and verse 10 there is such a concept as the household of faith it says as we therefore as we have therefore opportunity let us do good to all men say do good to all men then it says especially unto them who are of the household of faith can i tell you you have heard me say it, but let me repeat it if your absence is not missed it means that your presence was not contributing much you know that you are an active contributor to the program of God because people should be able to detect your absence. Where is that lady who always smiles on Sunday, whose glow can even, if you are sad and you look at that lady, where is she? And someone says she lost her mom. You say, well, I don't know her, but let me know where. Can I send something to that lady? Believers are quick to wrap their hands around people who become active contributors to the growth of others. There are others, listen to what I'm telling you. This is very powerful. It is a terrible thing to not have a friend, to not have somebody who loves you and believes in you, who can cry. You see believers go through situations alone. No. Let me repeat number four again for emphasis seek comfort prayers and help from godly friends and then from the family of believers it's a culture in this ministry to make sure that all who are genuinely connected to this ministry as much as possible are shown the care and the love that is needed as much as god can grant us grace to do I do not believe in using people. I believe in people being blessed. And for as long as God grants us the grace, we'll continue to extend hands of love and benevolence all wise as much as God grants us grace. Hallelujah. Growing up, I used to wonder why our parents and elderly people, every wedding you see them there, every burial. And you are wondering, what, is it that you know everybody? They return back and they say, I'm traveling somewhere. Who is getting married again? Uh, one woman like this, I used to know her in 1971. I heard that her last one is getting married. And that's why you are traveling to the south. They return back. They are moving from pillar to post. And in our foolishness as children, we thought they were just wasting time. Can I tell you, you know how much you are invest, you've invested in people because like Gideon, when you blow that trumpet, 33,000 people should show up. Why are you crying? my child has not been able to go to school no not under my watch please allow this i will leave this child's education to me i remember when i was in primary school i remember you were there for me can i tell you the truth the law of seed time and harvest works powerfully powerfully there are many today your carelessness of yesterday has become a padlock to your destiny it locked your destiny and threw the key away that every time you want to move the memories of your carelessness of yesteryears, I'm praying in this service in the name of Jesus that the God of all mercy will show someone mercy. Yeah. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. Yeah. The body of believers. Don't just be an attendant. Be connected genuinely in truth. There is always something that you can do to add to the smiles of believers and build quality godly relationships how do you do that by being friendly i have taught you and by being an active contributor to the growth of people practice the law of honor don't downplay and demean people and expect them to invest their time and attention during the days of adversity no people will reciprocate based on their perception of who they think you are are we together this is very, very important. 
as tired as I can be sometimes, there are people, if I see their call and I, I see their text, I will make efforts to get up and respond. Why? Because I love everybody. But the truth is that their participation and their contribution in my life is not at the same level. Are we together now? Yes. What investments are you making now for those days? Man of God, does somebody believe in you enough to say, I will never watch you in shame. No matter what it is, I will come and wrap my arms around you and make sure that I stand by you to see that this rent issue or this financial issue gets out of the way. Can I tell you, depending on yourself by yourself to come out of affliction and challenges may end up burying you there. Sometimes you will need, even if you are Jesus, you will need Simon of Cyrene to help you carry that cross to Golgotha. And woe betides even a savior who does not have help. Is someone learning? Build godly relationships. Be kind. Be loving. Don't just be anointed. Don't just be a prayer warrior. Don't just be a word giant. In the face of affliction, people do not care. I have taught you, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. People will not come to help you just because you're a prayer giant, just because you're a word giant. Sometimes it's that sense of compassion and honor and empathy and you will be surprised how people will arise to come to your rescue. May you never lack helpers. I'm prophesying to you that in the name of Jesus Christ, may you never lack helpers. That at every point in your life, may there be someone who can arise genuinely and sincerely. I've taught you in discussing destiny helpers, let me do a one minute recap. I have taught you that there are four kinds of destiny helpers. Let me run through them very quickly. Number one, they first are called divine connectors. They do not have the solution to your challenges, but they know who has that solution. And they always are bridges. For instance, the slave girl connecting Naaman to Elisha. Divine connectors do not have the power to solve your problem, but they know somebody who knows somebody who can connect you. And statistic tells us that everybody is maximum of four people away from where your solutions are. No matter how serious that problem is, four people strategically arranged will connect you and your solution. Number two, men of influence. The second category of destiny helpers, men of influence. These are men who have the credibility, they have the track record, they have the ears of the territory. Their endorsement about you and their speaking over you can rewrite age-long narratives in a moment. One person can sign a signature and say, truly, this man is supposed to go to prison, but at my influence, I write something and that's it can I tell you God still works with men oh, and there are men who are gatekeepers whether they are believers or not I've told you that there are gatekeepers you don't cast away God grants you favor to be able to pass through them some of you have been grounded at this point afflictions have remained indefinite in your life because you do not understand the power of destiny relationships the power of destiny helpers men of influence one person his signature can give you a job his signature can veto whatever limitation and grant you access everything you see on earth is controlled by men behind every system is a man and that man has a will he has an emotion even if he's the unrighteous judge that was in Luke 18 a man who does not fear God nor regard men that's a dangerous man may you never meet such a man in your life I say may you never meet such a man in your life a man that does not fear God and does not regard men you can't talk to him about God you can't bribe you can't do anything you're in trouble does not fear God does not regard men but the Bible says a weak woman came and used a strategy to weary that man away until he avenged her adversaries there is always a man behind every system on earth and let me tell you when God wants to help you he gives you access to great men don't insult great men don't insult rich men 
Don't insult people who have paid the price to rise to certain positions. Rather, obtain wisdom by God and say that God should strategically position you. Joseph, you need Pharaoh to manifest your destiny. Daniel, you need Darius, you need Nebuchadnezzar to manifest your destiny. And these are systems and people who God himself recognizes. Are we together now? Number three, you need gifted men. I'm teaching, I'm just doing a quick recap on destiny helpers to buttress point four. You need gifted men. Especially for many of us here who are businessmen or even men in ministry. One gifted person can save you financial leakages. One gifted person can bring efficiency to your life beyond your imagination. The best corporations in the world sometimes are behind them are a few intelligent people who are making global impact, redefining civilization. The whole corporation is sharing the glory, but the truth is that the brains behind them may not be more than four or five gifted men. Finally, and maybe not most importantly, but more importantly, burden bearers. I told you that the assignment, burden bearers are not after your titles. They are not after whoever or whatever you are. They are after you as a person. Burden bearers may not be able to move you forward, but they have an assignment to stop you from going back. These are men who will cry with you. These are people who will see your nakedness and still cover you and cry with you. May God send burden bearers to your life in the name of jesus the son of the living god many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivered him from them all so the charge here is to build godly relationships and to make meaningful contributions within the spiritual family that you find yourself you are in koinonia here make i'm not talking of finances finances about the least contribution you can make your prayer your participation that through your life someone is loving jesus through your life someone is encouraged someone who would have left the things of god is now drawn back through your life hallelujah can i give you the last number five what is the fifth biblical strategy when you are in a season of adversity of any kind, engage the prophetic. Engage the prophetic. Engage the prophetic. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. Hosea 12 and verse 13. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved one more time and by a prophet the lord it was the lord that did the deliverance but he used a prophet and by a prophet was he preserved every time believers went through seasons of adversity seasons of affliction and tragedy midwifing their breakthrough were the ministry of prophets is it the exodus of israel from egypt is it the axe head floating in second kings chapter 6 from verse 1 to 7 hallelujah is it the wife of the shunammite uh, i mean the the, the 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 wife of the sons of the prophet is it the shunammite woman is it the widow in zarephath you can name all of these people is it samaria the land of samaria going through famine every time there was affliction a negative season whether to people whether to nations whether to businesses Affliction can never turn to victory, isolating the prophetic. Genuine, authentic, apostolic, and prophetic ministry has a role to turn people's captivity around. It is a mandate and a mantle that God has placed. Listen to me. Let me assure you, God has anointed men. God has laid his hand upon men. Men that if you believe and open up your heart to receive of the spiritual investment in their life, I guarantee you like night becomes day, affliction can turn to victory right before your eyes. The prophetic is a 
potent ministry in spite of abuses when i say the prophetic is a combination of the apostolic and the prophetic yes there are abuses across the globe yes we hope that god especially in africa will fix some of these excesses and these mistakes here and there but do not make a mistake of throwing the baby and the bath water the, Jesus needed three major prophets in his life to emerge. One, Simon of Cyrene. Two, Anna the prophetess. Three, John the Baptist. Jesus as the word. You ignore the prophetic, especially in the times of adversity, you do that to your detriment. One, prophetic declarations. Do you know, I've told you, when I sit back and I watch people share testimonies, you would think that because God used me to birth this testimony and this has happened so frequently, I should be used to it. Sometimes I stand as a spectator and I'm watching the wonder-working power of God that with one utterance backed up by the anointing of the Spirit, like that which will come upon someone this night, in the name of Jesus, that you'll see doors just like that. Because, listen... The Bible says he confirmed the words of his messengers. He confirmed the words of his messengers. One prophet stands over Samaria and says, by this time tomorrow. He was not speaking to a company. He was not speaking to a region. He was speaking to a whole nation. And a foolish advisor stood by the king and said, no, this cannot happen. Let me tell you the truth. Be careful what you say cannot happen. The kingdom of God is a compendium of infinite possibilities waiting for you to engage with understanding. And one of it, I assure you, is the prophetic. I have watched with all humility people rise from grass to grace by the, at the instance of the prophetic. I am a beneficiary of the prophetic myself. speak and doors just open oh let it be well with you let doors be open and that's it i'm telling you it is it's still a wonder how the prophetic works that one declaration and the spirit of wisdom moves in motion and even if it is four lepers the holy ghost will begin to arrange insignificant conditions that insist and ensure that you come out of that situation you're not the first to go through a financial situation. You're not the first to go through an embarrassing situation. You're not the first to go through a health challenge. Listen, the Bible says the thing that was is the thing that is and is the thing that is to come. I guarantee you by the integrity of scripture, there is absolutely nothing happening to you that is happening the first time. The Bible chronicles men and women who weird afflictions until they wrought victory out of them. That time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shot the mouth of lions women who receive their dead back to life the bible says the things that are written are for time they are written for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope hope that i will come out of this hope that i will have the last laugh hope that the ministry will rise again even if you are samson your hair can grow again even if they pluck out your eyes listen there are three things they, would, they were supposed to remove from Samson to destroy him. Satan did not remove the third one. And that was what brought the greatest victory. His hair, his eyes, his hand. His hair was cut off. His eyes was plucked out. But his hand was left. And it was with that hand, he said, God, no matter what I've done wrong, grant me one last time. And while the hair was growing back, the eyes could not grow back but the hand came and he pushed the bible says he killed more people in his death even if you are mephibosheth who went through i've taught you about mephibosheth the mystery of the carelessness of a midwife mephibosheth's tragedy was not because of his carelessness a midwife did not handle him well and he made him crippled there are situations you may be having right now that you do not have any active role in making it happen. They met Jesus and said, who seen that this man was born blind? Was it him or his father? Jesus answering said, neither, but that the glory of the Lord will be revealed. The Bible talks about a widow who was losing all the men in her life. 
had lost her husband, now had lost her only son. Her life was shattered. But just when they were about to cross the gate of name, here comes Jesus. When you see Jesus, you see hope. When you see Jesus, you see restoration. When you see Jesus, it is a symbol that light can come at the end of darkness. Listen to me. A 33 year old body was hanging on the cross and you would think that was the end of it. Even Satan believed that was the end. Men believed that was the end. Kings believed that was the end. Principalities and powers believed that was the end. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. Provided you are righteous, there is a guarantee that the Lord, that the Lord shall deliver him from them all. From them all. Financial afflictions, marital afflictions, ministerial afflictions. My Bible says, Many, not few, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Hallelujah. Sit down. We'll soon pray. One of the most tragic renditions of affliction in the Bible was the story of the man Job. You would think that after losing his sons and his finances, that would be the end of it. The Bible says another conference was held in the heavenlies. And again, Satan demanded to touch and afflict his body. And boils began to come out of the body of Job that could not be explained. Everybody ran away from him. Do you know what it means to be the greatest man in the East? It's like maybe, let's say for want of what, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and then you see them on the streets of somewhere in the United States, and you say, what happened to you? And he says, in one day, not one year, one day, everything crashed. The friends of Job ran away. The family ran away from him. Everything that was, where were the people that he raised in his journey to becoming great? They ran away. It was only him and his wife. The same way it was only Jesus and Mary. And then the Bible says, Job 42, hallelujah, and verse 10. This is the Jesus we serve. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. I don't know who I'm prophesying to, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I call upon the God of Jeshurun, the one who is able to turn night to day. Let every captivity in your life give way in the name of Jesus Christ. Let every captivity in your life give way in the name of Jesus. I'm a winner man, a winner man. Is one my battle for me? I'm a winner man, a winner man. Is one my battle for me? I'm a winner man, a winner man. Is one my battle for me? So when you see any believer, whether a man of God, whether a businessman, whether a family going through affliction just ask them are you the righteous if they dare say yes begin to dance and rejoice in the midst of the storm and they will be wondering what is the meaning of this madness you tell them that i came for koinonia and i heard a message that many are the afflictions of the righteous but there is a guarantee that the lord not an angel the lord will deliver him from them all Hallelujah. Let's finish Job 42, 10. And the Lord turned, give it to us, the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much. So God can do that. God can go that far to give me twice what I have lost. He never said twice money, twice influence twice anointing twice joy twice grace anything a man lose the bible says god can restore don't you think i'm motivating you this is a prophetic word that no matter what it is listen you may say apostle but the person i'm talking about has died god can bring 10 fathers 10 husbands god can bring one person that is equivalent to 10 sons I know you may never see your loved one again because they have gone but you find comfort number one that you will meet them again but that in the interim as far as shame is concerned it is not you that will see shame
I can imagine passing through a place called Lodaba. You would have seen a popular crippled man called Mephibosheth. And you look at him and say, what happened to you? Then he would begin a story. It's not my fault. Maybe I would have been a great man, but the midwife, as my mother was bringing me forth, the midwife was careless. And because of the carelessness of that midwife, my limbs became crippled, never to walk again. But one day, this same Lord again, a king is sitting in the palace and he becomes restless. The king called David, out of the many things that would have occupied his mind, he begins to think and say, is there anyone in the house of Saul that I may show kindness? Saul is long dead and he spent his life persecuting me because the mantle for kingship had transferred to me. However, is there any man in his house? And they said, there is nobody. Oh, however, there is one crippled man called Mephibosheth and immediately he sent for Ziba. He said, Ziba, go to Lodeba. Go and fetch that crippled man. You did not bring anything unclean to the palace of the king. But he said, for this one, you are exempted. They brought the man and he thought they were going to kill him. What have I done now? I don't even have the energy to fight or look for trouble. Why is the king looking for me? So this is how my life is going to end. Not knowing that this God, once you are the righteous, the Bible says that the Lord will deliver you from every affliction. He brought him to the palace. Listen, when he brought him to the palace, he said, Ziba, you have 15 sons. Their assignment to be to farm and make sure that there's endless supply for this crippled called Mephibosheth. But as for you, you will dine with me here all the days of your life. So don't be surprised that after this service, someone calls you and says, I don't know what was happening to my spirit, but in the name of Jesus, God has said to stand by you in ministry. God has said to restore the battle you have been fighting for 10 years, for 20 years, finally comes to an end. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Look at me. Never become ashamed of your battles. It is common to all men. Fight the marital battles with dignity. Fight the academic battles with dignity. I know that you may be an orphan. Stand in integrity and fight the fight of faith. Don't act as if you are, it's, it's a unique thing. Oh, you are a man of God. And probably it looks like ministry is not growing. Don't be ashamed. Stand tall and fight it with dignity. I'm a man of God, but four of my children are wayward. And it's, it's a bad testimony. Don't worry. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. You fight with faith. Lord, I dedicated these children to God Almighty. Now I hear that they are drinking all around and wasting their life. I call upon the one who turns the affliction of the righteous. And you begin to pray. And sometimes you may be discouraged. And you find comfort within the body of believers. Listen. Let me advise you, and I'm doing this by responsibility. Let me advise you. Make sure as a believer, you do not add to the pain of people in church. Are we together now? When you hear that people are going through things and issues in their lives, your assignment is not to be a rumor monger multiplying people's pain. Okay, yes, the child is behaving, he's not a responsible person. He's all around doing all kinds of things. What can we do as a contribution? That's a believer's response. I may not know the family, but let's hold hands and invest a two minutes prayer. Oh Lord, for the sake of your name, let this man of God not see shame. And all of a sudden they will tell you that the child came for koinonia. And it did, did not matter what overflow he was seated. That the power of God fetched him out and that was the end of that demonic thing. And you watch that one Saul now becoming tall. Listen, I don't claim to know everything, but let me tell you sincerely. I have watched God transform people. I have watched people's night become day. 
I have watched the relegated in every dimension become nobles, become people of dignity and honor. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do? Jesus. One more time. Listen. He's the creator of the universe. What can you do? What can you do? Jesus. You're the name above every other name. What can you change? What can you change? Jesus. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, look at me. If you had seen some of us, maybe some 15, 17, 18 years ago, you would never imagine that would be the same people being used by God. I don't know who has concluded about you. I don't know what devil. I know you may not carry a semblance of the palace, but when you are chosen, you are chosen. It's as simple as that. The lifter of men, the lifter of men, the one who can wipe away the tears of men. Listen, listen to me. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you something good can come out of Nazareth? Whatever Nazareth means to you, Apostle, right now, I'm in a network of all kinds of problems. I have financial problems. Maybe I'm suffering with the police. Maybe in ministry. Perhaps you've not even been doing ministry properly. You are just playing all kinds of games around ministry and things have not been working well and your life has plunged down right now. Like Samson, I assure you, provided you can answer that name righteous. My Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Mama, hear me. I know you have cried and you have cried over your children, cried over your job, promotion that is due 10, 20 years you've not been lifted. You are looking for promotion when God is talking of restoration. There is a big difference between promotion and restoration. Promotion means to go higher. Restoration means to gain time, to be brought back to where you would have been. Hallelujah. I want you to believe this because the next five minutes I'm going to pray and prophesy over your life from the depth of my spirit. We have been given the grace to bless, to speak and to create possibilities. This is the assignment of the prophetic. And listen, don't you sit down and say, Apostle, you don't know the trouble I'm in. I'm owing 10 billion, 100 days. Even if it's 10 naira, it's still faith that will bring you out. Apostle, can I rise again as a man of God? I started walking in the prophetic, but I got, I dappled into all kinds of things. And right now, it looks like that grace is not there. We're wrongly mentored and we're just playing games. Provided you answer that name righteous, something can still happen. How about those trusting God for the fruit of the womb? How about those trusting God to end all kinds of yokes and curses, family curses, marital curses, financial curses, ministerial curses? This is why he sent you here. This one thing I know about God is that God lifts, is that God restores, is that God is able to wipe the tears of men. That you look at your former self and you cannot even know again. That people look at your life and your life becomes a sermon. Everybody who looks at your life, a series can come out of your life. And people can say, you mean this is what God can do? Everything I've said is found in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. To the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church. The manifold wisdom of God. I will hold on through the storm. I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal you're the living.
lifter of men the lifter of men no matter what i'm going through i will hold on through the storm i will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men the lifter of men one more time of God you will rise again because you are the righteous businessman you will rise again because you are the righteous I speak to every family here north east south and west you will rise again ah that statement e cupboard that has been used over your life the departure of the glory that men look at your life and it looks like is a warning and a lesson to others this God that you call Olowo Bogoro, the one that can turn the life of men around. When God arises from his throne, he says, let God arise, let God arise, let God arise, and all his enemies be scattered. Let God arise, and financial affliction scattered. Let God arise, and every curse and every yoke be scattered. Can I tell you, let men laugh at you while you look to Jesus. Let men laugh at you while you pray. Let men laugh at you while you speak the word. Let men laugh at you while you enjoy the comfort and the blessing of the church. Let men laugh at you while you receive the prophetic. You have received the spiritual combination. Victory is a formula. Something plus something plus something plus something is what equals the manifestation of victory. Lord, you took my pain away, and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm not wasting your time. I want you to listen very carefully to me. There are many of you here, as beautiful as your clothes may look, as wonderful as your faces may look, it's like there is, you are, you are being torn apart by situations. Maybe someone is watching me from a hospital. You have served God with all your life, but here you are by yourself or with a loved one and literally that loved one is going or maybe there is a family right now that has been bereaved and as i'm speaking right now people are just crying and saying god where were you you've taken the pain and the sorrow away you've given me peace and denial no need to cry cause you're always with me you're my father my everything oh man me please look at me do not be afraid of your wounds no when you see a patient in the hospital about to go through a surgical procedure no matter how healthy that patient is before that time you lie down as though you are helpless and then once the anesthesia is given
sometimes the patient is even sleeping losing consciousness and watch what happens the doctors can be there for hours removing things replacing things all kinds of bypasses happening and at that point if they told you that were a human being you would not even believe it i've had the opportunity to watch a few delicate surgeries where they had to literally take part of a man's skull out and walk on the brain walk on several things you know remove tumors and all of that and sometimes you see heart bypass surgeries and all kinds of complicated surgeries for hours and literally you are watching a supposed dead body there you would think that body would never come back to life and while the doctors are working sometimes they themselves become afraid because of what they see but then eventually they seal that person up and in a few hours the person just wakes up and pain and from one moment to the other and after a few months that same person is running around and you cannot if you will never believe that person was once there can i tell you the truth you are not the first to fail in ministry everybody has had a share of, of failure and pain you are not the first to fail in family i know your marriage is about to tear apart all kinds of things are happening and you are wondering lord but i love you i've served you all my life probably you are someone you are a student you are not doing well you love the lord you have options to compromise i was touched when i heard the testimony of the gentleman who was here said he bought all kinds of rams because you are looking for results and you see the thing sometimes with the body of christ is that we're experts at multiplying the pain of people when you find people who are going through seasons and moments of pain this is a call to the body of christ we must learn to be people of love it does not bring glory to god when we continue to celebrate the pain the downfall whatever it is of one another that's not the way the kingdom works once upon a time the disciples were going with jesus and they saw some other people doing ministry and they did not understand what they were doing and the disciples requested for permission from jesus should we call down fire on them because you are the only one it's only your voice that should be heard you are jesus and truly jesus was the voice and yet jesus said do you not know what spirit you are of in other words that's not part of your ministry i'm here to heal i'm here to mend i'm here to lift i'm here to bind man of god don't be ashamed of the fact that you are serving the Lord and it looks like there are financial issues. Don't worry. The God of heaven is bringing wisdom and is helping you. You may become the discussion of many people, but it's good they are aware so that there will be witnesses when you rise. They will say, this one is not fake. I saw it. I saw the man needing millions of dollars for their building. And I, I saw how God raised people mysteriously. I saw how the children, none of them could go to school because of poverty. But I also know through their life what favor is. That one person stepped into the family and rewrote the story. I don't know what you are going through, but the Lord sent me this morning and this, this night to speak to you and to let you know that the word righteous and the word affliction is not strange the word righteous and the word affliction sometimes can go hand in glove but it is defeat that should not be that you never never settle and say i am finished don't use that word for yourself jesus already said it for you and he never said i am finished he said it is finished you are not permitted to say I am finished you only say it is finished you may cry but I want you to know that God is the lifter of men my life is a testimony God raised some of us to be an inspiration to a generation that you should not make a mistake to doubt God only a fool will say there is no God if you ever doubt whether God can help men my life it is written on my life Ebenezer God who can help men hallelujah so as you see the businessman right now 
battling with loans, battling with trouble, what you should do as a believer is to invest prayer and to encourage them. You will come out of it. A politician who lost the election, maybe somebody who things didn't work out for, don't find joy in adding to the pain of people. It is an antichrist Luciferian spirit. Are we together? Don't worry, man of God. Oh, I hear you were doing ministry, playing games and doing all kinds of things, but I'm happy that you have now repented genuinely. You can start from where you are and the God of heaven can lift you with the dignity of kingdom integrity. I hear you are a business person and you lost the deal. Things have gone bad. I hear you are a lady who, who, who always have to sleep around to raise money, house rent, but now I hear you have made up your mind to work with God. Don't feel bad. God can help you right from where you are. Can I tell you? When anybody laughs at you, just verify if you are still the righteous. Once you find out that you are the righteous, give God praise. Because I can assure you that sooner or later, anybody who laughed at you will have to bury his head in shame forever. Can I pray for you now? I really want to speak over your life tonight and I want you to believe it. You're going to pray one prayer that in the name of Jesus, every discouragement, every mountain that stands before me, I announce to you that I am the righteous and therefore I am coming out of it. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Following online, pray. Azaria family, make sure you are praying in the name of Jesus. Someone is speaking as a man of God, a businessman, career person, politician, parent, whatever the situation is. It says, let the weak say, so the weak can say. The weak may not be able to do. The weak may not be able to rise. But the weak can say. And the moment you can say, all other things will begin to fall in line. Someone open your mouth and pray. Speak over your health. Speak over the failing business. Speak over the marital issue. Speak over the ministry issue. Speak over the job challenge. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Someone is praying. Many are the afflictions. Someone pray in the hospital. You are in the hospital, but make sure you are praying. You've lost a loved one, but make sure you are praying. You may be crying listening to me, but make sure you are praying. You may be discouraged, offended with God, but make sure you are praying. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Nigeria, Africa, I know things may not be as we want for now because of all the economic issues there, but many are the afflictions of the righteous. I dare to say Nigeria is a righteous nation. Therefore, the Lord will deliver him from them all. Pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says the righteous man falls seven times, but he leaves them with an assurance that he will rise. That the righteous preacher can be afflicted. The righteous mother can be afflicted. The righteous family can be afflicted. The righteous business can be afflicted. The righteous laborer can be afflicted. The righteous prophet, the righteous apostle, the righteous teacher, the righteous pastor, the righteous evangelist. You find out you're a man of God and it looks like there's some sickness in your body. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't join all this hypocrisy and all of that. You pray, get people to pray. 
you need to go to the hospital go to the hospital and treat yourself with nobility it does not make you less anointed take responsibility over your life and your health while you are trusting God to strengthen you a day will come you will overcome that realm of that epileptic condition you can stand strong but until then you owe yourself a responsibility to be serious your child is wayward don't be ashamed and don't be afraid believers can come and stand by you we can pray and cry together and say lord we will not lose this one to the devil hallelujah yes your business falls up it looks like things are going wrong no problem go and listen to my message principles of restoration there i teach on five reasons why people lose things there are things you may need to learn there are corrections you may need to make there are all kinds of things but by all means let that word i am righteous the righteousness of god in christ jesus i am righteous and because i am righteous the bible says even though the afflictions are many it leaves me with an assurance that the lord delivered him from them all it never said from them it says from them all you will hear testimonies of people who will come and tell you i did not believe that God could bring me out of this there are many of you who will sing and dance with tears coming out of your eyes because you, you know you will look at what God is doing in your life and say God even me there's a song we used to sing is it too high take it down for me he says I am so glad that Jesus loves me Jesus loves me Jesus loves me I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me even me. Listen, I'm indoctrinating your mind to believe that if there are two people on earth and they say, who does Jesus love? You should have it at the back of your mind. Be indoctrinated with this revelation. I have told you. If God says he's going to bless 10 people in Koinonia, I will start praying for the remaining nine because I know one position has gone at the instant of that statement. It is the truth. I have convinced myself to believe that he loves me. It's not just some emotional blind thing that does not have a basis. When I had a revelation of what he did for me on the cross and that even though he's exalted Lord and King, he doesn't want to take a chance he's still making intercession for me was that not what job did for his sons paradventure that's the responsibility of a father it may not look like it but you will rise it may not look like it but you will shine it may not look like it but in the name of jesus i am praying for you listen let me pray for every parent here in your lifetime you will see god lift your children i'm saying it from the depth of my spirit and while i'm speaking respectfully some of them are in beer palace right now while i'm speaking some of them are somewhere maybe internet fraud while i'm speaking some of them have vowed all kinds of things don't worry if the prodigal son could come back home i assure you by the god of heaven who delivers the righteous i'm praying again for every parent in your lifetime you will have a cause to rejoice <laughs> hallelujah now before i speak over your life i want you to mention the areas i leave you with god for the next one two minutes what areas of affliction have you seen in your life that you truly desire that the lord will take this out of your life i want you to open your mouth and pray i'm releasing my faith with you and i'm about to speak over your life you will marvel and wonder at the power of this god after tonight's service go ahead and pray he has given us the grace and the unction to speak being commanded to bless and this we must do but i like you to release your faith don't spare don't be quiet don't let the devil lie to you that god cannot bring you deliverance someone is praying is it your marriage is it finances 
Is it your health? Is it your ministry? Is it a new level in your life? Is it your work with God, your prayer life, your word study life? Is it your family? Go ahead and pray. It says to be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. It says, let your request be made known unto God. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me pray for you now. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. Oh, speak from the heavens and I'll hear from the earth. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. My altar is calling you, oh God. My sacrifice is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you. Touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar touch my body. Let the fire from your altar. Listen. I've shared with you my story when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me he stretched his hand towards me and light at his brilliance that light and it didn't it didn't shine on me it entered me when that light entered me how I survived and did not die is a question I will ask him when we go to heaven because no man can receive that kind of light and still survive as I began to study on light through the years I would learn that the light of God is the basis of his illumination remember sight is the eyes plus light sight is not because you have eyes if you enter a dark room even if your eyes are correct you would not see because it takes a union of an eye and light to equal sight so light entered me but then I also read from Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 amplified. It says, and in that sun-like splendor is the hiding place of his power. That the power of God hides in his light. When you buy a perfume or you buy whatever product, they don't give you the product that you bought alone. Usually, it will come in a container. Am I, am I right on that? Or a carton or some packaging you don't really need the packaging per se the beauty and everything sometimes you can buy perfumes that are so small but then the whole packaging can look like you are carrying a, 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 a maybe an AC or something and you keep opening layer to layer and there you find the small thing is when you apply it you will know the value of that small thing as small as it is am I right on that so when the Word of God comes contained within it is his wisdom contained within it is his favor but contained within it is his power so what he was doing to me jesus was not just working on my mind and my spirit it was an infusion of spiritual power that it is from the abundance of that which we receive that we speak over people over cities and nations and literally shift the spiritual climate of men systems and structures no man can do this it's not just about speaking I'm saying this so that as I speak over your life you truly believe with your heart you can stand and spectate and yet nothing happens to you but your heart can be open the Bible says blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord we have not come 
just by ourselves we were sent and he said when i sent you lackest thou anything he equips when he sends are you ready to receive in the name of jesus the son of